So the impact of the U.S. defaulting on its debt or not paying its bills would be felt immediately by many Americans. We don't know precisely where the axe would fall, but it could include suspension of Social Security checks or a loss of food stamp benefits, to name just a few. Beyond that, many economists argue it could also be devastating to financial markets, potentially tipping the country into a recession and creating economic turmoil globally. Mark Zandi is the chief economist at Moody's Analytics, and he's been keeping a very close eye on these concerns. He testified before Congress about them, and he joins us now. Mark Zandi, thank you so much for being here. What is your sense of confidence about whether or not a deal is going to be reached? Well, William, logic dictates that they'll uh, reach an agreement. Um, you know, a lot of drama, uh, Sturm and Drang, but, you know, when it gets uh, down to the last minute here, I expect them to come through and pass a piece of legislation increasing the limit. But having said that, you know, I've you know, seen many debt limit battles over the years. This one feels potentially different. Uh, the politics are different. And as such, uh, you know, it's not a non-zero probability that lawmakers make a mistake here and breach the debt limit. So we can't rule that out. Speaker McCarthy says that just looking at the calendar, they have to strike a deal in the next couple of days in order to make the trains run on time. The markets have shown some concern over this, but not that much. Do you think that there is enough fire being applied to the feet of the people on Capitol Hill? Not enough. I mean, it's a bit perplexing. I, I don't uh, have not heard the pounding on the doors that, uh, you know, I typically have in past uh, debt limit dramas from business people, from donors, from voters. Uh, it, from the markets. I mean, take a look at the stock market. It's kind of hung in there really very well. No sign of any angst uh, among stock investors, which, which makes me a bit nervous, right? Because I do think it takes that pounding on the door to kind of light the fire, to generate the political will, to get lawmakers to make this tough vote. And uh, the fact that we're not seeing that makes me nervous. Now, I, I suspect as we get closer and closer to that so-called X date, when the Treasury can't make all the payments, then uh, markets will react and, you know, we'll get that pressure. But so far, uh, uh, I, the people are not as anxious as I thought they would be at this point in time. Let's say that they don't meet that deal. What happens in the days and the weeks immediately afterwards? Well, it's a mess, uh, you know, progressively worse mess as uh, our day, hours and days go by. You know, I think it is important to, to recognize, though, I don't think the Treasury would default on the debt. Uh, you know, they have the ability to pay bondholders. Uh, it's a separate accounting system, a uh, payment system, and they could get that done because they know if they don't pay on the debt, that would be like words like catastrophic would be appropriate, uh, just a complete, utter fiasco. But uh, they would stop making payments on uh, all other bills, and everyone would get their money from the government later and later and later, depending on how long this went. And of course, investors would be very anxious as well, uh, even though they're getting paid. They're going to say, hey, you know, look, they're willing to breach this go around. What about next time and the time after and the time after that? You, uh, the taxpayer, have to pay me more in higher interest to compensate for that risk. So the damage would start to accumulate uh, pretty quickly. Within a few days, I think it would be so significant that given how weak the economy already is coming into this, we'd, we'd be in recession. Do you think that your firm, Moody's, and others would, as has happened in the past, downgrade the U.S.'s a credit rating. And, and I guess my question is really the, the long-term reputational harm that this seems like it would do to the United States standing. Well, if you, uh, every rating agency is different in terms of their methodology and approach. I mean, if you uh, read uh, w what they're writing publicly, uh, I, I think it would take a default on the debt to actually get a downgrade, at least initially. I mean, if, this, if the breach extended on for more than a week or two, given the turmoil, they would be under pressure to downgrade at that point. But you make a great point, William. You know, downgrade or no downgrade, uh, the fact that we, the, the United States of America, ha ha can't pay our bills on time. And, you know, we, we have done that since the founding of our nation. The fact that we can't get that done it, it will have a big impact on people's trust and faith in us. And I, I can't uh, understate more how important that is. That is critical to keeping interest rates down here, uh, allowing us to invest and be the global engine of economic growth, and uh, not only economically, but geopolitically. And we would significantly diminish that by going down that dark path if, if we did breach. You warned about all of this and the coming storm as early as January of this year. When you see how close we are to the precipice now, does it surprise you how far we have gotten to the edge? 
No, no. I mean, we, I've done this for a long time. I've seen this go right down to the edge every single time. So, and you know, it's the, it's the politics of it. There, there is a, a, a aspect of it that's very per performative, uh, you know, theater. There's uh, folks on either side of the aisle here, uh, way on the other side of the aisle that need to be uh, accommodated so that you can get enough votes to get a piece of legislation. And that does require the drama. So I'm not surprised, uh, but I, uh, am, you know, each time that we come down to the wire, I get increasingly more nervous. And, uh, you know, the, the, my level of angst is now starting to grow. I, I suspect we're going to come back, you know, the next few days, certainly after Memorial Day, and lawmakers will, will strike a deal. But, gee, um, you know, it just feels very uncomfortable. And it goes to a broader point. You know, this is no way to run a railroad. I mean, this debt limit thing is not at all productive. It's highly counterproductive. We need to figure out a way to get rid of it. All right. Mark Zandi of Moody's Analytics, thank you so much for being here. Sure thing. Thank you.